Hey y'all. Um walking to the store and I just wanted to share something that I was thinking about today. Hopefully uh it can help someone. So my topic is online schooling. Homeschooling. Why did I do it? Okay, so first, I had always wanted my kids to do homeschooling, online school, but um, I was afraid of taking that step of taking them out of public school and then ensuring that they did get the education that they needed and that it would be accepted once they graduate so accredited that is let me slow down my heart racing Whew. so the first it was two main reasons why i did it the first reason was I was in between homes, living situation. Okay, I think these cars gonna get on my nerves, hold on. Okay, I found a better place to talk. So like I was saying, I was in between living spaces. Um, at first I was staying at Motel 6 and I was working, didn't have a a car so I was catching Uber uh, back and forth to work and back and forth to take the kids to school and it was getting costly um, so I had moved to Motel 6 because the house that I had had staphylococcus mold in it and my daughter is allergic to it she had an allergic reaction and the person that I was renting from was very very shady in cleaning it up they just basically painted over it so I said nah uh, we gotta go so we got out of that lease and it was really tough to find a place so I was stuck at Motel 6 for a while um I had stayed with my mom for uh, a couple of months um and so my kids were going to school in her district so when I ended up uh, moving into Motel 6, it was approximately 30 miles from the hotel to their school. So I would pay um, $40 to get them to school. And then I think it was like 25 to get to work from their school. And then I would have to leave work to go back to their schools to pick them up. And they were at two different schools. So the fee was in it with that. Um, but it was in like the same area, like a street up. And then I would bring them to work with me. And I was working at a nail t as a nail tech and my kids are well behaved. So my um, managers and bosses, they didn't mind the kids being there cause they, it was like they was never there. Like even the clients and the workers would say like, dang, your kids are so quiet. We would never know that they were here. So um, that was the first reason why it was getting too expensive. Uh, the second reason was my son has a learning disability. He does have a touch of ADHD and I feel like he's a tad bit autistic, but we're working towards that um, just to make sure because He's so intelligent that it's a very thin line. Like you can, if you weren't being observant, you would see it as being defiant, a defiant child or um, just, you know, acting up. You, you wouldn't think that it was um, something deeper to it, which it was. So um, he, I went to go visit him in school and he had uh, 
he had an IEP at this time, but I went to his math class and the class was all at their desk and they're doing work off of the projector whiteboard. But my son was in the back of the classroom playing with manipulatives, basically like big old Legos. I don't know if y'all remember, they used to have the cubits to count, you'd, you'd have those. So he was back there counting on manipulatives, basically just having fun because it didn't look like he had work to do with it. And um, I was like, what in the world is going on? So the lady was like, we have um, a lot of kids in the class. So when I can't uh, be one-on-one -on -one with him and help him, then we just uh, send them to the back and let them work with manipulatives. And I was like, okay. So basically it seemed like he wasn't really getting any learning done. And this don't got really much to do with it. Uh, the next part I'm about to tell you but it happened also he was in band and he had a trumpet and they had um, cameras in the halls and so his instrument got stolen and they run the cameras and can't nobody figure out who stole his instrument and that was like a $1,200 freaking instrument it was brand new still to this day have no clue where the instrument is so my son was in the sixth grade and my daughter was in the third and after i did some research online seeing what my part was to take them out i found out that i'd have to sign a form stating that i released them from the public school sector and that i plan to homeschool them and then i also found out that there's paperwork that i would have to fill out i'd have to keep everything that I was teaching them uh, in the test grades. And and this was if I was to do it just by myself, like with no onlining or no other curricular, just me making it up or using the internet for help as I go. And that's how I first started it because I applied for them to go to online schooling and they were full and that was at the nearly end of the school year so they had like three months of school left and i just um took them out i signed the paper i took them out and um i was scared i was scared when i did it but i still did it because i knew that it was what i needed to do it was gonna help me out financially and it was gonna help the kids out in the in the end uh, the long run, uh, you know, with their education wise. So, um, from there, those three months, they would come to work with me. I printed up different curricula online and I had them doing math, science, social studies, and I would let them go outside for PE. And while we were waiting to see if we could be accepted into the Connections Academy Online, which is a free public school, but it's a charter school and it's online only. So uh, the beginning of the summer, they had openings. So I uh, applied for the both of them. And all I had to do was just give them their last um, report card. And then um, they had to take a assessment test to see where they were and if they were like, if they needed um, extra help or if they were like in a right spot uh, for their, their, their age and their grade. Um, and so when the test results came back, I had like a meeting with the um, admissions and they were asking me, how do I feel about retaining my son? Because he is not performing on the grade level that he has. And I was like, I suspected that. And plus his report card that we had turned in, he had like a, quite a few failing grades. So, and it was like consistent throughout the, you know, the beginning of the year and the ending of the year. So I was like, yeah, we're just gonna have to do that. You know, help him get a chance to get to the area where he needs to be. 
So I um whew, I uh let my son start back in sixth grade and my daughter went in into the fourth and this was in 2017 and so because they were at home and I knew that my son needed um, a lot more help I hired a private tutor to come to the house and work with them like two or three hours a day and she was young she had graduated from connections academy herself with honors and it's funny how me we ended up running into her but she was a great help and even with the help that she gave my son was still struggling um and i could only do so much i basically did everything that i could do besides doing the work for him when i would get off of work you know i was attempting to whoo explain things to him and at this point when he got in when when he got into um online schooling he hadn't had his iep so what we did was we started i had you know brought up that you know he he might need those services again so we went through the process of starting his iep and so for the iep you have to have documented uh, proof that the child is um, struggling in areas so they need like months and months of paperwork paper trails showing how he's performing in all the different classes and then also you'd have to have the um, the doctors what's the word I'm looking for diagnosis if they had any learning disabilities and so it took the ending of that year and um, the, by the second round, we ended up getting the IEP. And so basically it just gave him more extra time on testing um, where they had, they could read, text to read. And uh, that was a big help. Uh, so at the end of the year, we did see some improvement, but it wasn't exactly where he was still not testing in sixth grade. And so uh, it was a hard choice, but I did make the choice to keep him back um, and see how he did for the next year. So with the next year starting fresh with the IEP and the extra help that he got, he did great. Um, he was understanding the concepts. He was understanding what was being taught to him. He was he was soaring in, in the classes. He, he went from making, you know, 20s and 30s and 40s to now he might have like a 50 or a 60, more 70s, more 80s. So um, I felt comfortable with pushing him on from there. And now to fast forward to where we are now, uh, they're both in the 10th grade but they're both AB honor roll students. Um, I have two complete opposite kids. Like one, he has his challenges with reading, with speech, um, literacy. So of course, if you have literacy problems, you're gonna, you know, struggle because it's gonna take you longer. And he's still not exactly where he should be, but he is definitely um, getting better. And each year I, I keep saying, you know, I feel like there's something more because yes, he does have hyperactivity, but he also has like slight anxiety and um, just it's simple things that it's not even simple. It's just certain things that I noticed and I'm like, he, he needs help in this area. So he had to do a lot more tests that the school was able to provide, but the school will not do it for you. It, you as a parent have to say, hey, I feel like this is something wrong or can we look into something else or how can I get more help with that? So I know that he slurred his speeches, uh, the way he puts his words together, sometimes writing letter, letters backwards. I thought that it was a bit 
like maybe dyslexic or something like that but um and and like i said maybe borderline on the finer end of the autistic spectrum because of how he acts his behavior his mannerisms um and so we were able to get him speech and ot which is the occupational therapy to help with his writing and uh so he does speech twice a week and OT twice a week. And he has a uh, extra math class, like a math hall. So once he's done his regular class, he can have an hour in math hall with a teacher that stays and helps him. I just wanna add that, you know, they were an online schooling in 2017 and we didn't even know how God was preparing us for the future because everybody knows in 2020, like, majority of the kids they were sent home for um online school and they had no idea how to deal with it uh i was staying with a friend at the time and she had four kids i think five um and they were you know pushed into online schooling and it was it was hard for them and they were in elementary middle and high and from what I've been hearing lately is that a lot of teachers are saying because of that half a year that the kids basically were forced to be homeschooled, a lot of them didn't learn because the teachers were too busy just trying to get them to show up or figuring out how to teach now that they're not used to teaching online, they're used to teaching in person. So God helped me dodge that bullet because if I had to deal with that, in the same year that all the other parents did, I would have lost my everlasting mind, no lie. I would have been nutting up like, bro, this is, I'm not nobody's teacher. Like, yes, I did go to school for early childhood development. However, that is from, that is from <laughs> birth to age 12, 13, you know? So, and again, I wasn't taught like, you know, to do, math science and all of that i was taught to help assist it in like afternoon after school program and you know do the basics for the child development um from what pre-k to kindergarten but that that don't qualify me as nobody's teacher so yeah hats off to all the ones that did deal with that and handled that but i didn't have to worry about the transition because when school started my kids were homeschooling they were online and so now with them being in there from 2017 and it's 2024 um it has still helped me because i have been in transition basically since i got out the military and i'll i'll do a little video on that too my life has not been no crystal stairs that's for sure um so homeschooling helped keep something normal i remember when i grew up i went to a lot of schools and I, I was taken out of so many schools i went to five or six different middle schools I, I do not know how many elementary schools and i went to three different high schools that's a lot of moving and it took a toll on me i never got a chance to have like real solid friends um a sense of stability you know uh and i would have to leave one school like in the middle of the year probably two or three different ones in the middle of the year and be the new student and have to understand the new teacher and then the curriculum that they had and they may be behind or ahead and so it's no wonder lord is god that i made it through that that i ended up graduating but um because of this online schooling my son will still graduate on time and he's gonna graduate with college credits because they have dual enrollment so they're gonna do dual enrollment for their 10th and I mean for their 11th and 12th grade year and with the dual enrollment my son will graduate on time with college credits and my, my daughter is gonna graduate early with college credits. So um, 
I don't see a downfall to it. A lot of people say, oh, but they don't have any interactions with other kids. Yeah, this school, they send out at least <laughs> weekly, they send out at least 20 to 30 ways that all the students can meet up. They plan for them to meet at like the skating ring, the jump house, different libraries, the parks, uh, museums. And this is not even just regular field trips. This is just for them to be able to meet kids in their area or uh, to socialize. They have a sneaker ball. Um, yeah, and then on top of that, they also have clubs. So the student can choose to join the clubs and then the clubs have places where they meet up and sometimes they do it online. And then, um, of course, if you can afford for your kids to go like to the Y or uh, to any other like after school program, have them in something like soccer, football, basketball, it, it doesn't matter. You, you can, you know, get your kids to do things to meet uh, other kids. And um, so what I would do, I would just take them skating. Um, and then um, also the teachers, they'll like open up the floor for the kids to like uh, share their online personalities like if they're in roblox or whatever like that and then they can you know play virtually that way um my daughter she's met her best friend from online schooling and i got to meet her parents and since me and the parents met we've made up play dates for them to go so they've been um hanging out at different places uh we went to callaway gardens for the fourth with them um they had a, a sleepover before and I was there. Um, yeah, so you can make it your own. Do whatever it is that you um, got to do to make it your own and to teach your kids. But in the long run, it's been great for me because my kids aren't being pushed and ruled by society. Like I could not imagine being in public school and having to deal with the LGBTQ um, plus situation. And I'm raising them up in the fear of Yahuwah and Yeshua, <laughs> Lord help me. And so they understand that's our belief, you know, that there's only male and female there's male and female animals there's male and female plants and humans and so they don't they're not pushed into that agenda uh also with all these daggone school shootings and the bullying um and I don't know it's just it's in a more controlled environment and i asked them i say y'all ready to go back to public school and they were like no no we love it i mean but wouldn't you you get to wake up and stay in your pajamas if you want to and you know i now they spoil i'll fix them a breakfast they gotta come down and get it though um and give them a little they can have coffee now they i mean they teenagers so sometimes they'll have iced coffee or a hot coffee and you know they wash their face brush their teeth and they sit wherever they want in their room um and get their work done at their own precious time you know they don't have to have school lunch because they got home school lunch and and breakfast and uh so it works out for them you know and if they finish early then they can go and where we stay they can they can go down to the park and you know just get out the house and just be teenagers so yeah that's all i wanted to share it's worked out for me so if you're thinking about it or considering it um and especially to the ones that's saying oh the, the kids don't 
they don't have any social skills. My kids didn't start homeschool until they were in the sixth and the third grade. So they got plenty of socialization skills. That's pretty much all you learn in kindergarten anyway. I would highly recommend that you let your children go to school from pre-K to about second grade. After that, they cool. There, there's not much you need to know about how to speak to people. They know how to speak to people. They're not afraid to speak to people. Um, and they can hold a conversation and they understand respectfulness of adults. So yeah, that's nonsense. Um, the only way a child wouldn't learn those things is if A, one, the parent doesn't teach them, uh, the parent doesn't give them the opportunity to have those interactions and you literally are just stuck in the house like the kids are stuck in the house every day all day they never go outside not even for a walk uh, you know they don't play online they don't have any social media that they can talk to other kids like my son he has a YouTube channel and he does a lot of stop motion and so he's met friends on online and they're in a discord so he talks to his friend on the phone like sometimes they'd be like i you know how discord is it'd be like a couple of people in there and i'm like okay i'm like son who are you talking to and i'm like who okay where he live at you know where they live at how old are they are you sure that that's who you're talking to can you prove it you know because it's weirdos out here but for the most part everything's been genuine so anyways, this is a long one, but I wanted to go ahead and share that. And hopefully my story was uh, inform informing. And also, I apologize for all the background noise. I don't move like two, three different times. Uh, this is the most privacy I get when I'm out. Because, <laughs> yeah, I live with two teens. And... Uh, it doesn't matter if I go on the front porch or the back porch, they can hear what I'm talking about. And sometimes I just need my little space. It rained a little bit today and for whatever reason, everybody and their auntie out here driving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> so uh, anyways, thanks for um, listening and watching and, you know, comment if you would like. And all right, peace.